Christmas time is here. This is fine. Oh, so far, so far. <laughs> Welcome to our Christmas episode. That's a little bit late, but I'm just so excited because when we're recording this, it hasn't happened yet. Welcome to holiday season. Happy belated Hanukkah. Happy Christmas. Happy just, you know, life, I guess, because we're leaving 2020 and I'm so thrilled. Can we, I'm, I, I have FOMO. Can we also, can we do the Hasafwa, Hasafwa, the whole, oh, both verses. Course. Can we do it at the same time? Always. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, one, yes. two, three, go. Christmas time is here. <laughs> Wait, second verse. Awesome. 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 Okay. Okay. I feel better. Uh, no one else does, but that's okay. If you, <laughs> everyone else feels worse. If you're the editor, do not worry about trying to line those up. They're like, I wasn't planning on it. But <laughs> since we're on Zoom, it's a lot harder for us to know who's saying what at what point. Allow it as, allow it to be it's it's chaotic uh it's, it's to serve its purpose. It's chaotic purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, it's like it's like when you sing in um f- for like row, row, row your boat. You know, yes. Each person it's around. It's around. 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 We should Thank actually you. call each other sometime and do that privately, or we see how many hasafwas we can get through in one round. Can we do it, but not privately? Can we just do it publicly? <laughs> we'll actually live stream it. So catch you later on Instagram. <laughs> Everybody's going to leave Patreon. Anyway, hello and welcome. Um, I'm so excited because we have a holiday episode that I'm forcing onto M and everybody, my Christmas cheer. I'm very excited and we're, we're sorry it's two days late, but we don't uh, control the calendar. So, uh, no, and we do control our calendar, but we're not good at it. That's so, for sure. I, here we are. <laughs> I wish I had, I mean, I did literally have so much time to do this and I just absolutely chose not to think about it until I was sitting right here right now. But I wish I had brought in our Krampus on the mantle, which uh, oh. one of our lovely fans gave us. Um, it's like an elf on the shelf, oh. but just incredibly so much but better. better. I also so much better. have always, by the way, wanted this. And the year that I finally like was able to like buy things, Target just stopped offering it to me. <gasps> but I really want Mench on a Bench. So oh, I love Mench on a Bench. Yeah. If someone knows where I can find myself a Mench on the Bench, I'm I'm in the in the market. <laughs> For a good mensch. Oh, a good mensch. I am in the market for a good mensch. Not in that way, though, I think. It said very, um, to clarify. very fiddler on the roof there of like matchmaker, matchmaker. I'm in, <laughs> yeah. I'm in the in the market for a good mensch. Anyway, uh, yes, happy holidays in general, whether you, uh, f- you know, have an elf on the shelf or a Krampus on the mantle or a Caillou on the yeah. bayou or any of those weird. Uh, a what on the what? A Caillou on the bayou. There's a. Oh, dear. There's, a, there's a trend right now on Twitter where people are making different versions that uh, that rhyme like elf on the shelf yeah yeah sure sure uh, the the big one going around right now is a picture of like Caillou that like show about Caillou that. traumatized me as a tra- like th- when my sister was little I can't look at I it I think Caillou traumatized everyone and a lot of people now as adults are like that kid was fucking terrible like he was really he weird was not I was not into at all <laughs> no my sister would watch that show and I'd be like please I would literally watch wild Kratz, anything just get me off of this Caillou business but no here he is back on TikTok it was it was his uh his theme song that was really intoxicating it was don't sing I'm it. not going to but I remember they made a trap music version of it and it kind of <laughs> actually was amazing so i my nightmare you're gonna have to listen to that on the way home happy holidays by the way i didn't happy holidays someone on twitter said oh i love to listen to the show except my husband hates christine's laugh or something <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> me oh, too ouch. me too so whatever we're <laughs> she all didn't stuck quite here. say that she said like i try to listen to it when we're going to sleep but my husband says christine's laugh wakes him up so he won't let me listen and i'm like well i wonder if my screaming house of wall will wake him up so hopefully i did the perp it did the purpose do you know how so- many pet owners hate me when I used to talk to Gio on here because yes, everyone's I dogs do. would freak out. So Because everyone likes to tell us when they hate us, which is super fun for our psyche. Like, anyway. You know what? Your favorite thing to do is humble us, and I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I know. Just knock us down a peg. So what um, what have you uh, what have you been doing so far, do you think? Where do you think you are in the world on the 27th? Because- oh, I'm definitely in my home. Well, that's the sad part. Like, my brother was going to come visit for the holidays. Obviously, he had to stay in L.A., which is a real bummer because he's alone out there. Uh, I can't see my dad because, like, you know, he has uh, his partner that he's with and we just don't want to mix too many people. Sure. And it's just tough. So, uh, you know, we're home alone and it's sad. And I know a lot of people out there are as well. So this is probably why I'm overcompensating with my like aggressive yelling cheer. Um, but I mean, <laughs> Em and your girlfriend's gone. Like, yes, it's I, tough I, out I can there. finally say it now that. Uh, OK, so two weeks ago, everyone, uh, <laughs> two weeks ago when you were listening to this uh 
the this podcast. I was gonna be this TV show, <laughs> this podcast, whatever it is. Uh, no, but uh, this podcast I had said on air, and then I made our editors cut it out because I didn't want to ruin anything. But Allison went home for Christmas, um, but we did it the smart way, where she went all the way to South Carolina and then quarantined for two weeks before she saw anyone because she didn't want to get anyone sick if she got something at the airport. Um, sure. Then she's spending the the time isolated with her family and then she's flying back to LA and then she's quarantining for another two weeks in our very convenient podcast apartment. Right. And, um, and so I'm going five weeks without seeing her. And I'm, I guess this makes, this will have made three weeks by the time you hear this. So oh I've been a goddamn mess just staring at walls. And I tried to mention it two weeks ago, but then I realized that she was surprising her parents. And some, right, yes. every now and then they get the urge to listen to the podcast. And I was like, wow, I'm totally going to ruin this surprise. It's going to happen the one day that they shouldn't listen. It, From yeah, across exactly. the country, I ruined the surprise that their kid is actually like down the street and has been this whole time. <laughs> so, well, actually, anyway. I just realized that's such a bummer because we went on and on about the podcast apartment and how like back in like two years ago or what uh, even probably less than that we were like barely able to afford rent and now we're very privileged enough to have a space that was like going to be our recording studio Truly. and obviously covid like turned that upside down but that was the intention was that we would record and youtube there etc um but now it's been really fortunate because we have like friends who have either you know needed to find a place to to live short term yeah. or like coming or it like quarantining or what have you and so it's been really really uh, a cool Op opportunity to ha give let people use it especially since i'm not flying out there and we went on a whole tangent where i was just saying like i'm pretty sure someday this is going to be on a ghost tour because <laughs> there's been so much like that's happened in this house with different it's people like, going in and out and oh, you and, and i someone, brought in haunted dolls and a krampus on the mantle and oh my god the tour guide would be like oh and someone quarantined here during the pandemic of 2020 yeah, and it really exactly. was just like the home for misfit friends because like yeah like you yes, said there yes. was one of our friends who like it sounds more tragic than it was, but ended up, ha you know, thinking they were going to be moving into a new place and it ended up not it's happening. It's a very L.A. thing. So then <laughs> they needed a place to stay until they like could find new friends. Like in between homes. Yes, they were in yeah, between yeah. homes. Someone else needed to stay there um, because there was construction going on at their place. Allison is quarantining. It's been so convenient. And it's also felt, yes. I mean, this sounds really bougie, and it is. And we're very, we have a lot of privilege in being able to say this, but it's felt nice to be able to offer our friends a, just a free place to stay. Yeah, and I feel like for so long, like, I felt like I had to take advantage of not advantage but you know take things from other people who are helping me out yeah. when I moved to LA Giving back and was hardcore struggling and so it does feel nice to be able to be like okay we can offer something yeah um, especially because it's tough not being able to use it when I'm <laughs> here it's true it's it really it makes us feel so much better though like we're paying rent like yeah. And that's why we drink is paying rent on a place that we're not even using. So now it's like, please take this free space, like, like, like take our accommodations. So yeah. it feels so, very, very nice to be able to help out people. It does. Anyway, so the whole point I was just going to say uh, one day it's going to be on a haunted tour is like, you know, all these people lived in there. I was saying like Eva's a woman in white mm -hmm. and she's going to stand in the doorway. Ghostly with cats like a, all over a her. Cat, right. So anyway, I just lo love that image in my mind that that's what the apartment is becoming. And it's like pretty on brand. Very on brand. I would say like part one of our plan is to like help everyone and be really wonderful and ha like give that reputation off. But then part two, you realize it was all for like the shtick of like making it even more haunted in the future. Like just bringing, right, exactly. bringing a lot of chaos into that place. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then that way people get more bang for their buck on the tour when it's all haunted and terrible. So exactly. Anyway, uh, are there any updates? Do we have any? Yes. I want you to open your presents. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Christine did this thing. Uh, not surprising. And uh, I guess because we can't be together for the holidays, Christine, we, we are doing a separate um, gift opening uh, by the way, so we're going to be able to give each other presents and we'll find a yeah, way. We're, we're streaming that on Patreon. I think it might have already come out when this comes out or maybe the same day. I'm not sure, but we're not um, sure yet, but you'll you'll see about it in, on the Internet, I guess. But so we're doing a separate gift opening situation. However, for some reason, there's one thing that Christine needed me to open today. So yes. this got overnighted to me. I had to overnight ship it, which, oops, that hurt my wallet, but I mean, it was worth it. This is just beautiful. If you're following us on YouTube, you can see what this looks like, but it's very like, <laughs> this is a uh, like HGTV packaging. Okay, right I'll here. be honest. I got a, a Cricut. It's so dorky, but I got one of those Cricut vinyl cutting machines. So <gasps> I made, that's how I made the, um, the little 
gift tag. I'm such a dork. No, it's but perfect. It's- I'm going to keep the tag. It's got a little green reindeer oh. on it and it says my name. And do you know how rarely my name is spelled properly? So, well, I, I try my best to spell your name properly. I'm going to so. hold on to this one for as long as I can, just in Aww. case. So, so this is the reason I sent this now is because it was meant to be sent a, lo- a long time, like oh weeks gosh. ago. So weeks it's ago. It's belated. Oh my god. I gosh. apologize. That's okay. But so, uh, hopefully you can enjoy it up until Christmas. Um, up until Christmas. Oh my gosh. But then after Christmas, I never look at it again. So, no, well, I, we'll see. I, uh, I have a guess as to what this is. I'm probably wrong, but at this point, you've just given me enough like traumatic experiences. Uh-oh. What do you think it is? Um, PTSD tells me that this is just a box of fucking lemons. Um, <laughs> no, but I wish that's it not- clever. It has nothing to do with lemon. I don't believe. No, you. it doesn't. Okay. It does not. Well, okay. Here we go. Also, I appreciate the buffalo plaid. So thank you for that. Oh, good. I'm glad. Very- I bought that wrapping paper just for you at Target. Very nature cozy. Um, <laughs> <gasps> oh my gosh, it's something Back to the Future already. I can see Marty McFly's name. I hope you don't have one of these already. <gasps> Christine. Oh, Christine. <laughs> you don't have one, right? No. Oh my gosh. It's a, okay. Wow. There's a, I, whew. okay. <laughs> see why it was supposed to be sent a long time ago i feel okay so bad. i see why it was supposed to be a long time ago for those wondering it is a it's um back to the future it's an advent calendar of back to the future and i'm gonna lose my fizzucking mind but also it's playmobil which is like if if you grew up in the 90s it was like the fucking like brand of little pl- knockoff legos that you played with <laughs> I don't, I'm sure it wasn't Lego. knockoff Legos, it's, but you know what I'm talking it's about. It's like a European brand, so it's probably a more German thing. Or Well, yeah. it's so funny that, first of all, thank you. This is f- so cool. Um, also, You're going to have to open like 15 at a time or something later on. Happily. Also, okay, so I guess in everything that you open, there's like a new little item, and then together it all builds like Hill Valley, which is... yeah. This is so cool. This is so on brand. This is so I'm exactly I'm so glad you didn't me. have it. I was like, it's so M that I was worried you already well, had one. I was going to say, the, well, I didn't know about this one, but um, I've been someone recently. I don't know who you are, but you do know who you are because you tagged me on Instagram. Um, but someone tagged me and they found like um, a hover, like a pillow that was shaped like the Back to the Future hoverboard. And I don't <gasps> know. It must be because like one of the anniversaries for Back to the Future just came out, but Target and Walmart have been weirdly selling a shitload of Back to the Future stuff. Oh. And so I've been scouring like both pages and like keeping everything in my cart. And they have a lot of like Playmobil Back to the Future stuff that like I've been like, I- it's been in my cart. Not this one, not the advent calendar. I didn't know this existed, but they've had like little like trinket, like fun packs. Oh. So I've known that Playmobil and Back to the Future did some sort of deal together recently, but I didn't know there was that a calendar. That must be what's going on. Yeah, wow. I, I totally, like, I was stuck trying to figure out if I should mail it, like, with your other gifts, and then I got, I waffled on it too long, and then I just overnighted it to you for the episode. But <sighs> Wow. Um, yeah, I, somebody, the thing is, somebody tagged me in this, like, in, like, October or something on Instagram, and I was like, don't say a word, because I'm going <laughs> to buy this for M right now. And I feel bad I didn't, like, save their name. I think a couple people sent me sent me the the link, but... um. They were like, this would be a good gift. And I was like, step aside. Yeah, get the I'm fuck ordering away. It. I have already purchased it. This is so, so cool. And one of the things that I like, I can already tell on the back, it shows like some of the items you get out of this. And one of them is, so if you are a Back to the Future fan, you know that there's like a photograph that Marty has of him and his siblings. And throughout the movie, as he gets farther away from like his parents meeting, the kids slowly fade away from the picture. And uh, and so I actually have a prop version of the picture where like if you move it either side <gasps> like the the siblings disappear there's oh apparently a playmobile version of that in here so it's like oh. literally the same background of like the real picture but it's a playmobile version of marty mcfly that well i was staring away. at the box like none of this means anything to me but i'm sure em will appreciate it. oh this is so cool wow i <laughs> pardon me oh there's the letter oh man okay wow there's so much to Oh, wow. So this is something you can do before Ooh. Al gets back to, to occupy your time. Oh, I'm going to – it's going to get real dangerous on my Instagram. <laughs> I'm going to be posting a lot of weird stuff. They, I Part of me wants to be like, oh, I'll just save this until next Christmas. But I don't. I know for a fact I don't have that in me. No, yeah, I, I almost did that. But then I was like, I can't. I need to send it in. I will say if this exists next year, 
I am not opposed to getting the same gift twice and like reopening Perfect. everything. So and like starting from day one. Yeah, I felt that. I hope I didn't like ruin the first half. No. Of the experience oh my god. By I'm sending it so late. Okay, but. now I literally get to open like 15 <laughs> gifts in a row. Oh no, poor it's me. It's like every kid's dream of the advent calendar. Like you just get to open them all at once. Oh man. Well, it's perfect because half of them I get to open right away, and half of them I have to be patient on. That's true. That's true. That's a great fucking gift. That was that's anyway. very on brand. Thank you. Oh my gosh, of course. I was like, don't tell Em I'm buying this, whoever you are. Uh, so thank you for keeping keeping your cool and not giving up the secret. Oh no, that, no, it was, uh, well, thank you, Daph, to whoever brought that into your mind. Well, I'm so happy you like it. I'm sorry it was so frenetic and I was like, bring it to cast. Well, I, it, um, it was in this like really like wild box too that was like yeah. completely <laughs> dented up and it said like open at cast. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I had to make the inside look more like HGTV status, you know, with my vinyl cutter. It really, uh, it was metaphorical for like, I'm a disaster on the outside, but on the inside, that's right. just you wait. Yeah. We have had that conversation. Okay, Christine, if you're looking for an excellent holiday gift, I got just the thing. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is truff hot sauce. I see. I should add that to my list. You're saying for gifts for you. Is that what you're list, saying? A uh, list for me, the, the backup list for me. Um, also like that extra <laughs> backup one in your sock for me and then a list for you and then a list for all the other people you love as well. <laughs> it's true. I okay, sorry, So M, as probably most of you know, is what I consider a hot sauce connoisseur. I thought, now, I thought you were going to say a hot mess, but yes. Hot, a hot, hot, sauce. hot, both of the above in a Venn diagram. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but I'm, I like been, I, I like some hot sauces. I'm kind of like so-so, but I, when I tried this truff stuff, if you will, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, it was like life-changing. I swear. I put it on everything now. And it's like so, my bottle's almost empty. And it's so swanky. You feel like uh, royalty yes, eating out of it. It's classy. It's a, it's a luxury hot sauce and uh, it makes every meal five stars. It's crafted with a signature blend of red chili, black truffle, organic agave nectar, and savory spices. And each bottle ships pristinely packaged, pristinely mm -hmm. packaged, and ready to gift. Okay, so there's three different types of um, truff sauce. I have been fortunate enough in my life to try all three. Uh, <laughs> there is the truff flagship hot sauce, which is like the black truffle hot sauce that started it all. And then there's the hotter hot sauce, which has like a jalapeno. There's a, a jalapeno notes, if you will. Uh -huh. This is the closest to wine I get. And they have this premium white truff hot sauce that... Oh my gosh. I mean, it's... One fragrant, two delicious. So, I mean. It, like, feels like it doesn't deserve to be in my fridge. You know what I mean? Like, it bingo. needs its own fridge because it's so special. <laughs> this sounds ridiculous, but truly, if you see it, like, it is it is good stuff. I mean, it, it was on Oprah's favorite things list for two years in a row. So, that's how you know, like, this is some primo stuff. And it tastes good. Uh, they have over 10,000 five-star reviews and over 2 billion followers worth of shout-outs on social. Billion, billion with a B. Um, I actually bought some for my mom and stepdad. And thankfully, they don't really listen to the podcast so they don't know that but um i think they're gonna really like it it's a classy gift see for yourself why truff is the biggest hot sauce on instagram and tiktok get 10 percent off site-wide when you use promo code drink at truff.com that's 10 percent off everything including white truff vip box and truff variety pack just in time for the holidays just shop at truff.com that's t-r-u-f-f-f -F -F, as in fantastic.com and use promo code drink so you uh, probably know Glossier for their skincare products and for popularizing the glowy, dewy skin look that Christine just always exudes. <laughs> Um, but Glossy also creates makeup products, body care products, and fragrance. And Glossy believes in the power of self-expression and personal choice in beauty and beyond. Truly, it's like the first time I've had like a real routine with my skincare and I think it's working. Um, so they have a milky jelly cleanser that I use and it's like, it really is like jelly. It's so nice. And it has this blend of five skin conditioners and you can clean away dirt, excess oil and makeup. Um, it's really nice at night before you go to bed. Um, and then prime, I used to be really bad about taking my makeup off, full disclosure. Um, <laughs> and then there's a priming moisturizer that lets you layer and build up. So like however much hydration you need, which for me is a lot. And then they have this balm.com, which, oh my gosh, my, I think the mango is my favorite. It's like, you can put on your lips, on your cuticles. It is a game changer. I wear it, especially now that I'm in a cold, wintry place. Right. It and your skin's has cracking changed and stuff. My life. Yeah. Yeah. It has changed my life. I love this stuff. I also like the name bomb.com. I mean, come on. I know. It's very clever. Balm.com. Also, Allison. So I know you said that you use your priming moisturizer. Allison uses the priming moisturizer, the, the rich one. So it's mm -hmm. like very um, buttery, which it sounds delicious, by the way, but like, it feels like <laughs> velvety. It's very, like, it's very uh, creamy. It's ultra moisturizing cream that is deeply comforting, impact with uh, nourishing shea butter and honey, and it smells so, so good every time she puts it on. Um, and 
well her skin is just flawless now so that's the one i use at night too because i feel like when i wake up my skin is so nice and soft and then um oh my gosh anyway it's a game changer i have very dry skin and this has really changed my life i know that sounds dramatic but it's true because <laughs> i used to just go to bed with my makeup on and it was not pretty and now everyone um, <laughs> everyone that i surround myself with i can look at without like my eyes your falling eyes off don't have to hurt yeah because they just look so beautiful their skin every so special every time i i see christine i'm like wow your skin is looking real good these days so so dewy so dewy <laughs> so buttery smooth get a three-step routine for any skin type by visiting glossier.com slash podcast slash drink for a limited time new customers can get 10 percent off your first order certain exclusions apply that's g-l-o-s-s-i-e-r.com slash podcast slash drink <laughs> Um, can I say one last thing before we start really briefly? Yes. I, like, I know this is a long intro, but my story's super short. That's so, okay. um, I After, promise. Yeah. First of all, can our first note be so sorry for the f- oh my four God. hour podcast last What did last we do? Week? I don't know what happened. I have. What did we do? I, we really, you guys gave us permission to start doing longer episodes and we really ran with it. And oh, we're talking to our listeners. Like you, you, you guys uh-huh. were like, oh no, it's good when you're do long episodes. And like, that was careful what you wish for. I, we never thought after the 200th episode, we would ever do an episode longer than that. And then the very next episode or something was uh, like just I feel bananas. I so bad. Oh my God. It Ooh. was so long. It must've been John Benet Ramsey maybe. Cause that was like I, a it two was, hour It was, it was. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, uh, it was that bad. one episode so I'm took sorry. us like f- the entire recording. T- it was, I mean, it was bananas. Yeah, it was bad. So uh, mine today is like ultra short to make up for it. <laughs> but um, I just want to make one final note here. Speaking of gifts and mail, is that like so? I I, I opened or I started like a um a mailbox here in Cincinnati because you and I have one in LA. But like, I just wanted to have one here in case I needed to like order anything or for Beach to Sandy or what have you. Um, and like, I didn't, it's just on my website, but I didn't expect people to really like use it. But I've gotten some like really, really sweet mail Aww. and cards. And I think a lot of them are both like one sent to the LA one and one sent okay, here, which yeah. I'm like, wow, they're doing like double the work. Um, oh. But like, I got this like Hodag postcard. Oh, um, that's from fun. Kate. And there's stuff I got a while back that I don't have like on me right now, but th- like I got this little Krampus car, creepy Krampus card um, from Becca. And then, okay, you're gonna hold on. So then, this is um, from Laura, little Christmas cards Ooh. and and Becca, like holiday cards. And it made me feel so special because I'm in my new house and like I'm getting holiday mail and it just feels really nice. Look at this. Oh, that is yeah. uh, the Constitution. It looks like. Yeah, with a wax seal. It's oh from my Greg. Gosh. And apparently Greg hand wrote this and then sent one to the LA mailbox. Too. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, my God. That's a lot of work. Oh, my God. But it's a really nice card. And then finally, I have two gifts that were sent to me, which I was so shocked that people sent me like little presents. But M, I think you'll appreciate. So first oh off, gosh. Ashley made these. Um there's a, a thank little god lemon those got in- sent not here i know oh i gosh. think they're like i know better than to send it to m it's a little lemon crocheted and a little avocado and they're just the cutest and the lemon as you can see is dirty because he went missing and it turns out Uh-oh. mooney likes to carry objects around the house like he's a friggin' squirrel now your pets are also falling in love with lemon yeah, he hid it in the fireplace. So maybe he's not falling in love. Maybe he wants to destroy Lemon. <laughs> I summoned yeah, he, I summoned my own thoughts into moonshine. I was like, <laughs> he literally carried it into the fireplace and dropped it behind some logs. And I was like, where did that lemon go? And it was on the kitchen counter. It wasn't like it was on the floor. So uh, Moonshine and anyway. I were like, build a fire tonight. <laughs> build a fire tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Please set, light the fire. Um, and then another Ashley uh, sent me the, okay, Em, this is going to be your favorite thing. Let me Why didn't it get sent to me? No, because because you'll appre- you'll oh, understand uh-huh, in a okay, moment. Okay, so okay. this was sent from Ashley, um, whose daughter also, whose ten years ten year old daughter listens to the show, which was super cute. And um, so Ashley, she was shopping online and and was just listening to the episode where you called me classy trash oh, and God. found this shirt. Hold on, this is and the I'm shirt. wearing it today. Keep <laughs> it classy and a little trashy. You know what? That and it's wearing the headband. That's um, what I t- Okay, so then um, I was completely correct on my aesthetic then because it, Yes, you were. I don't feel as bad anymore because clearly other people think classy trash equals that weird ass headband you've started wearing. It's a raccoon wearing like a bowed headband uh and it says keep it classy and a little trashy and I was like M is literally spot on, I'm I guess. Pretty sure I'm a fashionista. <laughs> Okay, now you're Move taking over, it too Tyra far. Banks. I got something to say. <laughs> Hang on. Ashley, look what you've done. 
Um, oh. But anyway, so I just like cracked up at the shirt and I was like, I have to show M on the show. So it makes me anyway. feel, it, I feel um, justified and heard and seen. So thank you. <laughs> you feel seen. I, I appreciate, I'm, I feel acknowledged that like what I had to say actually stood for something. So it works. Thank you. Yeah. So, and Ashley, uh, hi to you and your daughter who's 10, which is so sweet. And I'm sorry if we swear too much. Uh, and anyway, that's all. I just wanted to point out everybody and I've gotten mail a couple, you know, months and weeks ago, but I, that I don't have on me, but thank you to everyone who's sent mail. It's like, makes me feel really happy. That's yeah. all. Um, yeah. And did you want to shout out the, the address? Oh no. I mean, well, it's on our website. You can just go there. Okay. I don't know it by offhand anyway. Okay. So. Cool. Well, <laughs> um, and no pressure to mail anything. Obviously I just was like, so shocked that people actually went and found it. Can I do a, a caveat, though? If it is, like, specifically and that's why we drink related, yeah. it probably should come to the LA one. Otherwise, next time we're together and can open gifts, Christine's going to have to put them on a suitcase to bring them to LA for us to open together. Yeah. So I open the ones that are sent to me because a lot of times they're just, like, either lemon or, like, literally people have mailed me, like, Open all the goddamn fruits. lemons you want. Listen yeah. So I you. usually open. So if it's, like, something that you don't. But if it's for the Patreon video specifically, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't open them on air. So yeah, if it goes to the and that's where you drink one in LA, that's where we open our um our Patreon fan mail stuff. So yes, that's uh, all. Cool. Well, your turn. Yeah, wah ha. Okay, so here because it's Christmas, I wanted to do a Christmas story. But here's the thing, really, like after Krampus, you really can't top it. So I kind of just went with like a wintry situation in general, Ooh. which feels a little more um, non-denominational anyway than like yes. Santa or something. So agreed. Um, so I'm doing just kind of a, a, a winter, a winter adjacent cryptid. So okay. this is the uh, the story. Not really. This is uh, information on <laughs> the Yeti. Um <gasps> I can't believe you haven't done the Yeti yet. Oh, my gosh. Me either. Um, I also, so originally I was going to, I was thinking like, okay, well, like wintry, maybe I should do like the Abominable Snowman. Apparently yeah. they are the same thing. So. Yeah, I, th I thought so. I always thought they were different things in my head. I don't know why. Um, I mean, they have different names. It's kind of like how Sasquatch and Bigfoot in my head are the same thing, but apparently they're very different. Oh, my gosh. I can't keep track of these cryptids. Me either. They're, they all, and they all basically look the same. They're just different colors. So. Uh, this is the Yeti slash Abominable Snowman, which Great. I learned, by the way, uh, I don't know how to spell Abominable and I never will. Um, every time I tried, it was just a different wrong version. So <laughs> that's a fun fact about me now. The red squiggle just wouldn't disappear. It wouldn't go away. I was like, what vowel is wrong here? Um, and then at one point it was abdominal snowman. And I was like, I'm, I'm done. Abdom <laughs> I can't figure Consumption. it out. So uh, if you are wondering where have I might maybe seen the Yeti in my lifetime on in pop culture at the very least. Well, here. You've probably seen the Yeti slash abominable, abdominal snowman um, on Scooby-Doo, uh, Doctor Who, and Monsters, Inc. I think the sequel of Monsters, Inc. Um, also, the claymation Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, oh. My personal favorite is the uh, segment on Looney Tunes where the abominable snowman um, finds Daffy Duck and thinks that he's a rabbit. And names him George. Do we know what that is? <laughs> no, I don't remember that at all. I'm pretty sure it's like arguably one of like the more famous Looney Tunes like clips, if you will. Really? Mm -hmm. But it's like he. I don't remember that. Uh, like Daffy Duck is wearing like a little pink hat and it makes him have like almost bunny ears. And then uh, the abominable snowman finds him and is like, I love you very much. I am going to name you George and I will love you forever. And like. It's Daffy oh, Duck goodness. trying to get away from the abominable snowman. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to listen. I used to watch it a lot when I was a little kid. So it's just kind of glued, like lasered into my brain. But that's my personal favorite reference of the Yeti. So, uh, so what? Who? Who is? Who is the Yeti? Christine asks, and here's my answer to that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Yeti slash abominable snowman is the uh, is a mysterious bipedal creature in the mountains of Asia, usually mm -hmm. the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. um, is where uh, like 90% of the stories come from. Uh, the Yeti is muscular, surprisingly dark gray or reddish brown, which I always think of oh. that it is white. Um, but apparently the white is just like snow iced onto the, the fur, which checks out. Um, and I'll we'll allow it. Oh, <laughs> makes sense for like a creature that maybe doesn't exist. <laughs> um, 
And uh, the creature is known to be anywhere between two or 400 pounds. Um, oh. It is apparently shorter than uh, Bigfoot. Uh, the size ranges from like six to eight feet, depending on who you talk to. Okay. And I think that's not too big. I think Bigfoot is uh, on average like 10 feet. Oh. So for cryptozoologists, Yetis are, uh, they're apparently just considered like the more Asian branch of the Sasquatch family. So even though Sasquatch is much bigger, they think it's probably some sort of cousin of Sasquatch that is only found in Asia. Okay. Um, they're, when people try to figure out the etymology or like how the, the, to- the term Yeti came to be, there are a few thoughts. The main ones are that it is a combination of different Sherpa words. Um, Yeti is a combination probably of Ya, which is rock or cliff, and then mm. Te, which means animal, so like a rock animal. Oh, or a cliff okay. animal. Um, and Sherpa, by the way, is like a, a group that's native to like the mountains in like Nepal. Right. Um, so Yeti could also come from like old Sanskrit and it could be, it could come from the word yak- Yaksha or Yaksha, which means a hairy being with superhuman strength, which sounds about right. Yeah, that, that one fits. Yeah, it, it checks out. And then also <laughs> a lot of people have also said that it might actually not have been the word Yeti originally, but was the word Meti with an M. And oh, okay. it apparently in some languages or in certain dialects, that means bear. Um, oh. so different theories on where the name came from. Just all big hairy is, is kind of the big hairy the thing. Tying. Yes. Yeah, big hairy thing. Today's episode is brought to you by athletic greens, the most comprehensive daily nutritional beverage I have ever tried. And also the one that Blaze and my sister like to steal out of my cabinet and, uh, nutritionalize themselves as well. I'm not bitter about it. Don't worry. I was going to say, uh, just like how they steal it out of your cabinet, Athletic Greens in our house, it's kind of like, you know, when Tupperware just is cascading out of your cabinet, yes. <laughs> that's Athletic Greens in our house. You open a cabinet and you don't know what Athletic Greens is going to fall on you, but you know one of them is going to hit you and it's going to be great. And that's it. Whichever one you touch is yours. That's the game. That's, I'm it's sorry. A good, that's it's, how it works. It's the new roulette, if you will. With so many stressors in life, it's difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our bodies the nutrients it needs to thrive. We have busy schedules, poor sleep, exercise, stress, or simply not eating enough of the right foods. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of those fall into my life Uh and that's where athletic greens can help. So they have this daily all-in-one superfood power and it's by far the easiest and most delicious nutritional habit that you can add to your health routine today and empower you to take ownership of your health. I take it in the morning. Blaze puts it in his drink um, before he goes to work at the hospital. So I guess it works. He is on his feet for 13 hours a day so it's got to tell you something way before we ever started working with athletic greens we knew about it i knew about it just because rj was obsessed with them um you know we would always make smoothies together he puts them in the smoothies i mean anywhere he can sprinkle it in or add it to his diet in some (laughs) way um he's always been convinced that athletic greens is what gives him all of his energy so when we started working with it i was like oh my gosh i'm basically rj i get to just eat athletic greens olympic athlete it's not a big deal don't worry makes me feel more (laughs) athletic in general that's for sure (laughs) one tasty scoop of athletic greens contains 75 vitamins minerals and whole food source ingredients including a multivitamin multi-mineral probiotic green superfood blend and more that all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet increase energy and focus aid with digestion whoa and supports a healthy immune system all without the need to take multiple products which is a game changer in my opinion and athletic greens is lifestyle friendly whether you eat keto paleo vegan dairy free or gluten free and it contains less than one gram of sugar without compromising on taste and right now athletic greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system during the winter months they're offering our audience a free one-year supply of vitamin and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit our link today and you'll basically never have to buy vitamin D ever again. What a dream. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash drink and join health experts, athletes, and health conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every day. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash drink and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today. Hello. Hmm. What do I say next? Hmm. Fresh. Oh, it worked. My magic spell. <laughs> <laughs> a spell that you use every day. The co- the common witch in you, I might say. It's true. So, okay, I just want to say real quick right now that, you know, how sometimes I do this and Blaze is like downstairs cooking for me. Mm-hmm. I literally sent him down before we started recording to like pick tonight's meal oh, for us. <laughs> but, but before we started recording, Christine was like, oh, I'm eating HelloFresh tonight for dinner. So, yeah, can confirm. True. 
I can confirm. So I just want to mention real quick one that I had recently. So there are these, uh, tr- it's a triple mushroom truffle gnocchi. That sounds exactly and like, a, that sounds like right up Christine Schieffer Alley. It is. And oh my God. I mean, thankfully Blaze and I have like similar tastes, but I got to say that I like, I dream of that stuff, man. You know what? And I made it. My favorite thing about uh, us talking about HelloFresh is how many people have tagged us like on social media as they're cooking HelloFresh. And I've mentioned yes. a lot of times they're like, uh, they're pineapple tacos. Oh, and yeah. uh, there's, uh, you know, other stuff in it too. But I just think of them as pineapple tacos. Everyone has been tagging uh, me whenever they cook these tacos from HelloFresh. They're so good. And also their Parmesan crusted chicken. I've been getting tagged <laughs> in that a lot. That's also one of my favorite meals. Oh, my God. It's so, so delicious. It's really great. I honestly, it's we're not joking around. Like, I, if I could just eat HelloFresh every day for the rest of my life, I would. Also, because you get to make it yourself. It feels like, oh, my God, I made dinner for me and or my family or whomever. But it, it, it just feels really special. Anyway, I guess we should talk about HelloFresh now. If for some reason this is your very first episode of And That's Why We Drink, welcome to uh, the <laughs> chaos. And let's tell you all about HelloFresh, which we never shut up about. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. And they offer over 23 recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients so you'll never get bored. One of my favorite parts is that you can cut down on grocery bills and food waste. I mean, who wants to go to the grocery store right now anyway? Not me. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients so you're not overbuying, which is a burden on the planet, and also your wallet. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that. And they have these easy eats that offer tons of quick and easy meal solutions like oven ready and 10 to 20 minute meals if you're busy, which also I love. You can prep in advance um, the days you you need like a 10 to 20 minute meal. It's just really, it fits into, I think, a lot of people's lifestyles really well. Go to HelloFresh.com slash drink10 and use code drink10. 10 for 10 free meals 10 free meals including free shipping (laughs) oh my god i'm like uh, can i get in on that (laughs) go to hellofresh.com slash drink 10 and use code drink 10 for 10 free meals including free shipping and that's one zero drink 10 so uh one of the more popular stories of the yeti uh they all more or less date back to like sherpa folklore and one of the more popular stories from that time is the sherpa and the snowman Um, And so this is an excerpt from that. Long ago, there was a beast in our mountains known as the Tlomung, meaning in our language, mountain savage. Yikes. Its cunning and and ferocity uh, were so great as to be a match for anyone who encountered it. It also always outwit our hunters with their bows and arrows. It was said to live alone or with a very few of its kind, and it went sometimes on the ground and sometimes in the trees, or it was sometimes on the ground, sometimes in the trees. Although it was made very much like a man, uh, it was covered with long, dark hair and was more intelligent than a monkey, as well as being larger. The people, uh, as the people came in uh, and more in numbers, the mountain savage disappeared. But many people say they are still found in the mountains of Nepal, away to the west, where the Sherpa people call them Yeti. Uh, in pop culture, the Yeti is uh, just known to be like this big, massive, like shaggy eight man hybrid with huge feet. And some people also attribute like saber teeth, saber tooth, oh. uh, saber like teeth. I don't know how to phrase that. <laughs> Sa- saber like teeth. I was like teeth, saber yeah. tooth snowman. Ish. Okay. Um, okay. And a lot of people, again, think that it's white or gray, but. Apparently, we are all wrong there. And it is known to be aggressive. <laughs> Apparently, it throws rocks at villagers and has been known to, like, abduct children. Oh, I was going to say, well, the Bigfoot is known to throw rocks, but I think abducting children is pretty next level. Yeah, this one, <laughs> he really doesn't like to be bothered, apparently. No. Um, so, apparently, according to the Sherpas, this is the official definition or the official description of a Yeti is six to eight feet with a cone like scalp, pointed ears, a harness chest area. I don't know what that means. Um, a human like hmm. face and a bad temperament. And they have superhuman strength and the ability to carry off yaks and even abduct children, which I like how it's not, they have the ability to carry off children and even like carry yeah, off. Yeah. They should like, be switched. Like abducting children is something humans can do. So yeah, it, I can't carry not, off a yak, like with no, one arm, but quite. apparently that's not the quite. less impressive part of that. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Sherpas have mysterious footprints in the snow. Um, and apparently since they're known to like eat yaks, there have also been a surprising number of yak incidents or yak killings, uh, reported in the area. So that, oh no. I don't really know. It could just be like, 
they don't actually link to each other, but they're using it as an excuse for, oh, well, there's clearly Yeti in the area. Mm -hmm. Um, The Yeti will, (laughs) here are two things. These are two contradictory facts that I found from different websites, and I don't know which one's true, (laughs) but I just thought I'd say both of them. I'll pick which one's true. Okay, I like that game, yes. Okay, Okay. so (laughs) one of them is that the Sherpa will only show itself to people who believe in it. Oh, like a fairy, okay. Like a fairy. Uh, But also that any man who sees the face of a Yeti will die. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, that seems... But if that was true, then why would anyone want to believe in the Yeti and like... Okay, but maybe... Okay, wait. Here, I got it. Maybe you don't want to believe it, but you do. Like, you don't want to believe there are demons, but you do. And so the more you think about like a demon, the more likely it is to be drawn to you and then you die. Or like even people who are like... I don't want to think about aliens because they know I'm thinking about them. Exactly. Which is me in the shower every day when I'm like, wait a second. I'm alone <laughs> like, and I'm going to be. If I'm to be abducted by aliens, please God, not while I'm naked. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I think it makes sense, but okay. Uh, okay. That checks out. So it could be both. It's just like, you're really unfortunate if you do see one. I but guess. also like, there's no way to know, right? Because like, then it, whoever saw the face would die. And they it, like, if report. you believe it and you see it and die, then it's like, nobody can check out your story. Yeah. Ah, I wonder if that's a, like, um, if that's kind of built upon itself in the legend of, like, because so few people have seen one, maybe they just said, like, oh, they must have died when they saw him. It's like the perfect loophole, because, like, you can't prove it, but you can't disprove it. That's your, okay, you, I'm glad we played that game, because you really managed that well. Listen, I'm a genius. Oh. (laughs) I can't even say it with a straight face. (laughs) Um, so apparently there's different types of Sherpa. One is called the Chudi. Which uh, they prey on goats, sheep, and yaks. And then there's the mite, M-I-T-E, mite, mite, mite. And they attack animals, but also sometimes humans. So if you're going to, humans. So if you see a Yeti, you have to hope that you're seeing Judy because apparently they don't eat human beings. Got it. Okay. Um, and the actual, the coined term abominable snowman, uh, that term came to be in like, I think, 1921. And there was a journalist named Henry Newman who created this term and actually created it. This is a fun fact. Created it by accident. It was like he did not mean to call this creature an abominable snowman. Oh. Um, so. What a very specific word to create by a- name to create by accident. And truly. Well, so uh, Henry Newman was a journalist and he was interviewing um, an expedition, like a hunt uh, expedition of hunters. Uh, hunters? I think they were actually mountain climbers. Every st- every story was like either hunters or mountain climbers who all find these. Uh, who find sure Yeti. people are in the mountains for some ungodly reason. They're doing something there, and it's there's not too much you can do. And they're probably pretty cold. Okay, <laughs> and they're, got yes. it. And uh, so he was interviewing um, a group that had just come back from an expedition, and they said that they found these really like wildly large footprints. Um, mm. And I guess these footprints were, quote, probably caused by a large loping gray wolf, which in the soft snow formed double tracks rather than those of a barefooted man. So they didn't look human and they were wildly large. Um, And I guess the group, they couldn't figure out what these tracks were. But, you know, when you're climbing through that area, you have a Sherpa with you at all times to guide you through. And so uh, I think that's why a lot of this ends up being like Sherpa folklore, because whatever people see, usually their Sherpa guide that's with them is there to kind of influence what the sto- how the story goes. Got it. Makes sense. So um, they saw these massive tracks and their Sherpa on this expedition said that it was probably tracks from the wild man of the snows. And oh, if- oh, don't worry. That's just <laughs> tracks from the wild man of the snow. It's fine. <laughs> it's like we've never had to discuss them up until right now. But yeah. Um, I know. Oh, sorry. Did I not tell you? We're, we're far from home, but just know, like, the wild man in the snow <laughs> is nearby. He's been here. That's like when Blaze and I went on that freaking jaguar Yes, expedition. I was thinking the same thing. Oh, my God. At, like, what one was, in the morning. What was, what was the homie's name? Wasn't his name M or something? His name was M. Yes. How wild is that? You're... you're Maybe not your Sherpa, literally, but your guide through all of that yes. name was M. Who, and by the carried- way, I like how both M's are like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a couple Jaguars. Don't worry yeah, about and it. Yeah, much, and much like my my M, this M carried an umbrella around as a fucking weapon. And okay. was like, don't worry, I got it. If someone broke into my house, an umbrella is one of the top three things I would grab. Oh, I so know. I was like, this again. is pretty spot on. But we got in this freaking jungle, and it was me, Blaze, and then an elderly couple and uh, this guy <laughs> named M, and he was like, oh, don't worry. Uh, well, well, he was like, well, we have to be really careful and quiet. And like, I hope we don't see a Jaguar. And we were like, wait, you hope we don't see one? I thought 
this is like an expedition, a nighttime expedition to see a jaguar. And he was like, oh, yeah, but like we hope to not see one because they're extremely dangerous and they're always watching from the trees and they're extremely violent and the odds of making it out alive. And we were like, wait, 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 why did we sign up for this? He's like, well, you signed a waiver. But the real, like, oh the real question, Christine, is why did you sign up for that though? When you were like, let's go on an expedition to go see jaguars. Okay, what you did know you me, was- right? Like, you know that this is a thing where I would go, cool, I'm going to do it. And then drag plays into the woods. And then he, he would go, if someone why t- have you done if this? If someone was trying to <laughs> promote to me, like, hey, you should come on this tour where at night we go out into the wilderness and we find jaguars, I would be like, hmm, <laughs> no, thank you. Blaze like really saying, like, was like, hey, in the middle of the night, um, there's some like wild pythons and bears and lions and they're all free just scurrying around you want to take a walk through the woods no i do not no i I can see you so and he would he'd be like okay every time a branch snapped he would literally be we had he had to teach us how to form a group so that like we would be able to look like a larger animal so it wouldn't attack and i was like oh my god and he's like well don't worry it will just attack the slowest person and this elderly couple was like <laughs> wait a minute like we didn't get any warning oh my and i was god. like i'll probably be the slowest person let's be honest um i mean to be fair they would definitely stand a chance at survival because when it comes to like flight or fright i'm freeze and so i would just oh true 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 i would just stand there and be like you know what jaguars just i fucking literally <laughs> asked for this i didn't know my honeymoon and my funeral were going to be the same <laughs> event but here we are (laughs) i know and we'll have a great episode to cover uh anyway that just reminded me because we literally got out of the jeep in the middle of the night in this jungle preserve i'd have been like like, uh you go out and then i would lock the doors after they step outside he was like shaking he was like really scared and i was like why on earth are we doing this like you're more scared than i am yeah that tour guide wow okay i don't think blaze will ever forgive me for that so. You know, I feel like in your lifetime, there's nobody that knows you that doesn't forgive you for something. Like, <laughs> there's, there's always something. There's something in each of your relationships where people can't quite trust you anymore. And With Blaze, <laughs> it's only two. It's the time I took him out of the Jaguar hut and the time that I ordered a large pool to our house and pretended <laughs> like I had asked the landlord. And then it arrived and the landlord was like, no, you cannot do this. And Blaze was like, you told me the landlord said it was OK. And I was like, did I? And he's never forgiven me for that either. You know, there. So. I can't think right now of a time where I have lost my trust in you, which makes me more nervous because now every day that passes by, I'm closer (laughs) to the time where opportunity. It's like, I know it's coming. Like once it happens, I can be like, at least that's done with, but I can push the envelope a little further with you every day. Every day I live in fear. (laughs) Uh, It's it's gotta be some Ouija board experience that I've forced you to do. It's gotta be something really stupid that I can (laughs) confirm. Uh, Anyway, hmm. sorry. I don't know where we are anymore. Oh, yes. The wild man of the snow, which. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so, yeah. So they were like, where, what are these foot, where are these tracks from? And the Sherpa said, oh, it's probably the wild man of the snow. Apparently in uh, their language, wild man of the snow transla- translates to meto kongmi. Meta meta kongmi. Okay. Um, meto means unwashed and kongmi means man bear or snowman. So un- oh my. I think originally it was their way of saying like unwashed man bear or like dirty bear or something love it love it um so that was the original phrase and as so henry newman was asking them about this and when he wrote it all down he mistranslated it so he used the wrong phrases where instead of dirty he used the word abominable and instead of man bear he used the other translation which was snowman so <laughs> very specific like it went alternate from work dirty man to or dirty bear to abominable snowman <laughs> wow i guess meto the o in that because m-e-t-o-h mm-hmm. apparently uh he accidentally put a c where the o is or something and so oh, he's not very good at this i see he i think he was like writing quick and the o didn't fully close in his handwriting so he later wrote uh-huh. it as a c and then that changed the wording completely. So wow, how fun! Anyway, that's how the the term "abominable snowman" happened. It was wow. poor journalism. Yeah, well, okay, got it. Makes um, sense to me. It, t- it makes sense to me too. So here, uh, this is another excerpt. This is from a researcher named Myra Shackley, who uh, was reporting on two hikers in the '40s, and uh, when they saw actually multiple abominable snowmen walking together. Um, so this was. This is in the point of view of the hikers. The height was not much less than eight feet. Their their heads were described as squarish and the ears must lie close to the skull because their 
because there was no projection from the silhouette against the snow. What an oddly specific observation of like, well, I didn't see your ears poking out in your shadow, so you must have some tiny ears. That sounds like someone with big ears talking. Yeah, that sounds (laughs) like someone compensating for their big ears. Sounds like someone who's used to seeing their own ears in the shadows. Um... (laughs) There, the shoulders sloped sharply down uh, to a powerful chest covered by reddish brown hair, which formed a closed body fur mixed with long, straight hairs hanging downward. It was busy grubbing up roots and occasionally emitted a loud, high-pitched cry. In uh, 1957, so I think 15 years later, there was uh, an American writer named George Moore who, uh, I don't know if he was actually, I think he was like a, a mountain climber. He, but he ended up writing an article um, called "I Met the Abominable Snowman: A True Story," and it was about okay. and it was about his own expedition in Nepal. I love when people write a true story because then you yeah. know it's true, <laughs> based completely in reality on facts uh, only. And so this was in 1957. His name was George Moore, and this is an excerpt from his personal experience. Uh, tell me how much of this sounds like me, or how much of this I would describe you as. Ready? Okay, great. You already know it's going to be terrible. already, yep. A hideous face thrust apart the wildly thrashing leaves and gaped at us. I shall not forget the faces. Grayish skin, beetle black eyebrows, uh, a mouth that seemed to extend from ear to ear, and long yellowish teeth that were nerve shattering. But those eyes, those beady yellow eyes that stared at us with obvious demonical cunning and anger. That's the Christine I know. Demonical. Wow. <laughs> uh, that face is, also says, which is what I say every time I see you. I go, <laughs> oh, no, not that, again. that dewy face with the perfect eyebrows. Um, <laughs> weird ideas were beginning to force their way into my mind. Perhaps. But no. Damn it. It has to be. This was the abominable snowman. One thing is certain. Whatever science will someday discover uh, the creature humankind has called the abominable snow- snowman is there in the Himalayan Heights. I know, and I met it there. Um, Sounds like he had like voice to text on. He's like, no, but wait, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> He's like not realizing. If he did voice to text today, he would, you'd also see like part of his like grocery list in there. He'd be like, <laughs> cabbage. No, 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 lettuce, lettuce. Oh no, the abominable snowman. Rhonda, I hate cabbage. <laughs> or you'd see like his, uh, his, uh, his own thinking while he's driving like that fucker came out of nowhere. So True story, the most famous Yeti hunter is a mountaineer named Reinhold Mesner. Um, apparently he's like the Yeti go-to guy. He okay. apparently saw one in the eighties in the Himalayas. And, uh, he has returned often to try to find another Yeti. Um, he leads a lot of, uh, expeditions out there and apparently it's pretty common for expeditions in this area to be specifically to go yeti hunting or yeti searching that's kind of fun yeah i mean if i'm gonna go climb a mountain with potential promise of a cryptid i'm more likely to climb that mountain for sure um so mesner's theory is that the yeti is just a combination of a bear and also like the exaggerated folklore about like wild animals in the area so it's just like a okay. really dramatic bear like a gemini um, <laughs> like, yeah, both of us with beady eyes. With got beady it. eyes. The Yeti has become a symbol in certain areas. So, like, it's now become almost a logo or a, a, a mascot for the area. And a lot of their companies have to do with the Yeti. There's, like, a Yeti hotel. There's a Yeti airport or a Yeti airline or something. Yeti hotel. <laughs> um, isn't that fun? Also, speaking yeah, of Yeti. Like, I want to change my honeymoon up and go there next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you can uh, basically do the jaguar thing all over again, except now you're climbing <laughs> up a mountain. Uh, speaking of the Yeti Hotel, um, which, by the way, is a luxury hotel. Which oh, is hell yeah. Very I nice. want nothing less from a Yeti Hotel. So apparently all the other, when it's not like in the Himalayas, the the big place that people see the Yeti is in Russia. Um, and so Siberia has also made the Yeti kind of one of its mascots and they have their own museum slash hotel slash park. It's all one like compound specifically for tourists to go hunting for Yetis while they're there. Um, and I think it's like a Yeti themed like hotel and, uh, museum and shit. And if you were to catch a Yeti while you're there, there is a $30,000 reward. To catch one? To catch one, because they're still looking for evidence of its existence. Okay, but don't, like, hurt it, right? Like, they don't want you to, like... I don't know. There there it. weren't any real specifics to it. But I will say that the Nepalese government, this isn't specifically in Siberia, but uh, the government in Nepal 
and the U.S. together have, of course, the U.S. would get its fucking hands on this. Uh Uh, They have regulated Yeti hunting now where you need special permits if you wanted to hunt Yetis. And I assume to be fair, it makes sense the U.S. got involved because I'm sure the U.S. is like the only place where tons of people go. I'm going to go shoot a Yeti now. Exactly. Okay. That checks Our out. tourists are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were like, hmm, American tourists who like guns. Ah, I have just uh-huh, the thing. Yes. <laughs> so they have, there's like three rules basically where if you're an American, you want to go to, uh, if you want to go looking for Yeti in the area, you have to have special permits, because, especially because you're like not a citizen of that right. area. Um, oh, you're not allowed to kill, but I guess you're allowed to shoot and harm i don't understand Ooh. and any evidence of a yeti um, must be handed over to uh, nepalese authorities so okay because i guess they are still desperately looking for like proof that this thing even exists so they're like look if you with your guns think you can help us out here go for it okay um so far though there hasn't been any concrete evidence um proving that the yeti exists originally i was gonna uh jot down a bunch of different situation or a bunch of different events where they thought that they found a lot of dna or they thought that they caught something but if i'm really summing it up every single time they've ever caught something it ended up being like an animal with mange or Uh which is weird because mange means that it's hairless and this thing is covered with fur maybe Um, it meant like it was like patchy hair maybe or like really tough hair or something yeah um, and anytime Weird. starting in like 2011, they've tried to do like DNA analysis. I know in 2013, there was like 40 specimens that were all <gasps> suggested to be Yeti Whoa. DNA. Every single one of them came back as like normal animals. Oh. Um, except for two of them, which came back as literally a Himalayan brown bear. Um, oh. <laughs> and then in 2017, they did the same thing with even more specimens and it all came back as animals we already knew. Um, I'm glad you didn't tell me everyone because I would have I would have literally gotten my hopes up about every single one and been convinced. I had a hunch you- that that might happen. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just not going to even be a tease. Um, <laughs> but most of the DNA has come back as common animals, like literally cows and dogs and things like that. Um, others have been more specifically uh, different strands of bear that are only found in that area so it kind of really strongly proves that like okay they're just bears from far away right um and also those bears happen i think all bears can i'm not a bear expert shockingly but at least these bears can like walk on their hind legs so a lot of people think the like oh okay so it's just you see one on it's yeah it's humanoid that's it looks like it's bipedal yeah um and then uh any animals that have been actually captured there was uh one that was A very large cat, which somehow was walking on its hind legs, which is kind of terrifying to me. Um, Or a (laughs) dremo, which uh, I I don't know if that's just a word in that area and it translates to something else here. But it's basically um, uh, like some sort of bear hybrid. Okay. Um, People have also thought that like one of the, I guess, at a year, like I'm sure hundreds of years ago, if not thousands of years ago, there was one bear that slowly evolved into two different types of bears. And one was like the Himalayan brown bear and a polar bear. And so oh. some people think that I think though, I I'm probably butchering this, but my understanding of it was that those two bears came from the same original bear. And oh. now that those two bears are separate species, if they bred together and had a polar bear, brown bear hybrid, it could almost look something like, interesting the yeti but there's no official documents of those bears ever having hybrid babies okay but a lot of people think like if it if it's a very specific type of bear in that area sure their thought is like oh maybe it's like some hybrid of the two that originally came from that space. interesting okay um so yetis have been seen in nepal russia uh india and china mainly but nepal and russia seem to be like the two big ones uh, and then I'll, I'll get to a couple of fun facts. Actually, I'm going to get to only fun facts now. There's, Yay! uh, there's one guy named Justin Anderson and he made a list called 10 things you should know about Yetis. And <laughs> that seemed pretty fun to Buzzfeed.com. Okay. Got it. I think Justin was, uh, like auditioning for Buzzfeed. Um, <laughs> because here are some of them, uh, so earlier when I gave the description of like Sherpas say that it's like so and so tall and it's got this color hair and all this. Apparently, here's a fun fact. Sherpas 
or some Sherpas at least, also believe that the Yeti's feet point backwards <gasps> so that it helps it walk up mountains easier. Oh, creepy. Which is just absolutely the worst. I would think it's your, your, the worst. I would think your knees have to go backwards. Right? That's just the whatever it's way. All bad. It's just it's all so bad. It's all so bad. Uh, so thank you, Justin, for that horrifying Thanks. thought. Another thing, uh, here's my arguably my favorite fact, is that apparently Yeti, female Yetis, are known to be uh, very, hmm, well endowed in their oh. in their chest area. Okay. And uh, so well endowed that gravity is no friend to them and they Uh-oh. hang further than their waist. Oh, their poor backs. Their poor backs. It's gotta um, hurt. So apparently when they run, it is commonplace which i'm sure there's like a whole three reports of this ever existing (laughs) but it's apparently so widely understood that uh female yetis like a continental soldier throw them right over their shoulders and (laughs) like a continental soldier uh oh my god and that's when they run they just toss them over just so they're not flopping around and weighing them down. Wow. So if you, what a sight. if you were to try to outrun a Yeti, particularly a female Yeti, if you run downhill because she's top heavy, um, you have a better chance of outrunning the Yeti. But also you have to remember the feet are backwards and now the boobs are backwards. Oh, so shit. it's like, this is such a weird She's like slowly, it, and then one day her head will spin around too. Her like, head just turns. <laughs> slowly just becoming in the, the reverse of herself. Oh my God. Apparently also the male Yetis, like the fur on their forehead, if they're running downhill, the wind will put it in their eyes and then they can't see where they're going. So your best chance of outrunning any Yeti is if you go downhill, apparently. Good, because my, my chances of running uphill are zero percent. So <laughs> if, I guess that's If my options were, I'm on a mountain and a serial killer says, I will not kill you if you can sprint up this mountain. Oh, I would say, bye. guess what? You're about to have a really active day because you're by cruel world. <laughs> a lot of a big active day of killing me because I am not even going to try running up this fucking hill. Um, <gasps> okay, next. Uh, okay, so apparently in 1974, there was a girl who was grazing her yaks when a yeti attacked her and killed all five animals by smashing their heads in. <gasps> Yikes. Um, and left her alone? No, knocked her out cold. And later when she woke up and tried to describe the Yeti to people, uh, she said that the Yeti had black hair uh, and not just backwards feet, but backwards fingers. Oh, God, this thing is just getting worse and worse. <laughs> it just keeps inverting on itself. How, are, how do fingers become backwards? What does that mean? I guess they bend the other <sighs> way, which is just the worst. Hey, guess what? I hated all of that. That was fucking terrible. <laughs> Um, oh, my God. Another one in 1977 is apparently there was a uh, a man who was kidnapped by a female Yeti. And then he re- uh, reappeared three years later saying that he had uh, had relations with the Yeti. Uh-oh. They had twins. And oh. the Yeti killed the daughter, but their son <gasps> stayed in the village. And every Yeti that you now see in that area is a descendant of that Yeti human hybrid that so now he's saying he's like the grandfather of exactly of the yeti yes okay great good for you guy yeah excellent congrats sure thing sure thing um also uh that man later also reported they were like so what did you do for three years while you were with this yeti and apparently uh-huh. all they ever did was throw rocks and eat frogs so oh, okay what a life sounds like a five-year-old's dream um <laughs> it does uh let me see let me see let me see Okay, so that's just some of them from the the Justin Anderson listicle. But I also wanted to say uh, you can see a Yeti yourself at the Animal Kingdom at Disney World on the ride Expedition Everest. Um, Originally, so basically you're like on a train and you're climbing Everest. And at some point you see like this animatronic Yeti. So it is currently in the last few years, it's just like a standalone does not move a uh, robot. It used to be an animatronic, but then apparently it was uh, so the arm, the arm used to come kind of swinging at the roller coaster. That was supposed to be like the scary part of like the abominable sure. snowman was going to like punch you in the face. And uh, <laughs> apparently it was like either built improperly, something about the structure where the arm was like slowly like falling away when it would move. So they just, the Imagineers just stopped it all together so now it just is sitting there and like almost well, like fingers kept inverting and they were like this is too terrifying like it was scary enough when it was gonna punch you but when the fingers turned back so the, some people when they take that ride the yeti is facing them and other times their oh. belly is like facing the other direction everything Nightmare just fuel. keeps twisting 
nightmare. Uh, but yeah, so apparently you can see a non-moving Yeti on that ride now. And I guess because it's like pre-punch, it looks like it's waving with a fist or something. Um, oh, how great for it. Uh, so also speaking of Imagineers, which by the way, have I ever told you there was nothing I ever wanted more in my life than to become an Imagineer when I was a kid? You have not, but I, that doesn't, a fact doesn't surprise me at when, all. You'd be great at that. When I was little, one of my biggest, like, first of all, there was, I had a few big tasks I planned to accomplish when I got to be an adult. None happened. Free um, radio show? No? Well, I did when I was uh, a kid. I did want to grow up to be a ghost hunter. So, like, we're almost there. I, I was going to say, you've done a lot of uh, cool <laughs> shit that I think a kid would dream of, yeah. Well, my two big things were I wanted to be a spy, and I wanted uh-huh. to be a... My mom told me I would die immediately, so I gave up on that dream. <laughs> well, and she wasn't entirely wrong, she, I guess. I, I won't even walk walk up a mountain, so she's probably yeah. right. <laughs> um and then the other thing is I wanted to design roller coasters. So when I... That's a good one. I thought that was going to be so fun. Like design like sets of like amusement parks and stuff. And um, But apparently you have to have degrees in animation and have gone to architecture school. And I was like, that sounds like a lot of fucking work. It sounds like a lot of engineering. Yeah. As so as, like, imagineering. Yeah. So yeah. and I remember watching one time like some old documentary about how they designed like the robots for like the Little Mermaid ride or something. And I was just like so enamored with it. Aww. Anyway, I will always be jealous of Imagineers because it's like the one really, really big thing I just never got to do. Well, the only thing we have in common in that respect is I also wanted to be a spy and I like carried a notebook around and would like write like Harry at the spy and would write everything down. But I did work at a PI company as an investigator. See? So I guess sort of. Yeah, I imagine a lot of spies actually have a much more boring job than we think. But I wanted to yeah. be like the spy kids. So Yeah, yeah, same, same, same. I had like all you the both little would die. I had like all the little gadgets back then where like you yes. put like your headphones on and you had like a sonar and you could listen yes. to something louder. And I would spy on my parents oh, and, I, listen, and then I would like the night vision goggles where you could like uh-huh. decode things. Yeah. I had like those those journals where it was like invisible mm-hmm. and like you couldn't see what it said and you had a certain code that you had to say into it. Oh my God, I was obsessed. And I was convinced I was a spy, by the way. I was convinced that nobody even saw me in those night vision goggles. I know. The, <laughs> you were just stumbling around. And my dad would be like, go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I would be like spying on my parents and they'd be like, okay, sign the divorce papers. And I was like, this isn't as fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> Sorry, the, mom and dad the saddest but also <laughs> most it accurate like, uh, that was entirely right there a mood i felt that it was so real and accurate and the worst part is then you take off the spy the spy thing and you can hear it because they're yelling so you're like i didn't even need those spy <laughs> headphones someone out there I can hear it through the doorway <laughs> someone out there who grew up in like a really like healthy well-adjusted family Blaise is, and allison <laughs> Oh, Allison is probably listening right now going, oh, like, that's really so much sadder than you realize. But I'm over here like, I totally get it. That's ex- Blaze is like, I've met your family. I don't doubt this for one second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, sad story. You over. know you're okay. from a broken childhood when you wanted to be a spy and you would practice by listening to your parents argue. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it really taught both of us well, I think, like in the most fucked up way. But like, memory. we learned skills. All alone. Okay. Uh, hmm. Oh, yeah. Animal Kingdom, the happiest place on earth. Whoops. Right. Um, <laughs> so there's one Imagineer apparently named Joe Road, R O H D E, and uh, has this like personal mission, Joe does, to teach others about the Yeti in any way possible. And you can okay. at him on Twitter. Uh, you can find oh. Joe Road at Twitter and ask him any question you want about a Yeti's, whether it's like simple yes or no questions or about like the Disney maintenance of that ride. Um, Wait, is it about just that Yeti or like Yeti's in general? I'm not sure, but I bet you could take your chances and roll that dice. Because I have more questions about the boobage. I also have more questions. I bet And I don't want him to be like freaked out by my presence, you know? I think we as a team could probably reach out to him and just see what he has to say. I think he would probably block us both, but we could try it. Wow, that would not be the first time someone blocked us on Twitter, right, Christine? Nope, certainly not. So, uh, <laughs> move on, move on. On BuzzFeed, there is a definitive ranking of monsters by uh, a BuzzFeed writer named Katie Heaney. And apparently Yeti breaks uh, ranks second, just behind oh. uh, Bigfoot. And uh, because apparently the Yeti is uh, basically Bigfoot in snow. So Love it. This is the, the quote. I don't mean that to be dismissive. One could also say that the Bigfoot is Yeti without snow, mm-hmm. but uh, the abominable snowman suggests that it is meaner than Bigfoot or at least severely misunderstood, and it's even harder to see, which makes it the perfect monster, which I think is mm-hmm. a fair argument of like, oh, Very. it's Bigfoot, but even 
more difficult to track down. Yep. Um, so more fun facts. Alexander the Great actually demanded to see a Yeti when he conquered the Indus Valley in 326 BC. Um, okay. And the locals said that they couldn't give him uh, that experience because apparently Yetis didn't live in that low of an altitude, which like way to cover your own ass. Because Love it. Can you imagine if Alexander the Great conquers an area and then is like, here's my one request. And you're like, yeah, no can do. Mr. Get me a mermaid. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Um, but so apparently they they denied that request real quick. Another fun fact is that in 1951, one of the like most legendary mountaineers, uh, Eric Shipton, had his own personal collection of photographs of Yeti footprints that he had taken on expeditions. Oh, cool. And uh, he apparently all these footprints were at least 16,000 feet above sea level. <gasps> and he sold his personal collection of photos for seventy five hundred dollars. Aww. Uh, and then in 1959, probably my favorite fun fact is that there was a guy Peter Byrne who was visiting this temple. Uh, apparently, so this is a weird thing. Apparently, a lot of like the Himalayan temples or monasteries had random body parts that like on display that were said to be yetis. So like they there's one that is specifically to this day there's like a skull of a yeti oh. and if you donate to the monastery they'll that's when they'll let you see the the skull Love of the yeti. Love that game. That's fun. Yeah, and apparently there's like two or three places like one has the skull, one has like a hand of a yeti, one has something else. So Peter Byrne go went to the particular temple that had uh, a hand of the like a severed hand of a yeti. And uh he wanted he wanted one of the fingers and <sighs> he did what he needed to. So he brought uh, a, a double, like a, a, a whole other finger. He brought a finger no. with him. I guess he had a friend who was like a uh, some sort of prime primatologist or I guess there was a, a finger that this guy offered him. It was like, here's a random ape oh. finger. Um, okay. And so this guy, he somehow had enough time to take off the finger of the severed hand and then replaced it with this finger he brought with him to the temple. What a jerk. So that way it would look like there was still a whole hand and no one would, you know, would know that he had taken a finger. Um, so he took the finger. Somehow he knew literal President Jimmy Stewart. Uh, President <laughs> Jimmy Stewart, excuse me? Isn't Jimmy Stewart an actor? Or is Jimmy Stewart a president? What am no, I thinking? I don't think. I'm thinking of Ronald Reagan, how he's an actor and a president. Jesus, that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what is wrong with me? Okay. I was like, I don't want to answer this because we've known that like both of us can dig each other into a hole. No, no, and- no. Sorry. I was thinking of Ronald Reagan because he was an actor and a president. And then I heard Jimmy Stewart and put both of them in my head together. I see. Sorry. I see. I see. I see. Okay. So he knew, he did know Jimmy Stewart though. And uh, while I guess he also happened to be in town. But my favorite is that you said President Jimmy Stewart, and I went, uh-huh. Like, I was not even going to correct you. I was like, okay, I guess. So confident. It's okay. Uh, but so I, uh, yeah, so they happened to be in town, Jimmy Stewart and his wife, Gloria. And okay. uh, this guy who had the finger was like, oh, let's let's meet up for coffee or something while you're in town with the finger in his pocket. Told them oh that he stole the finger. And then um, basically they said, oh, well, we're heading to London next after this. And this guy convinced them to smuggle the finger out of the country to London. And oh my gosh, what they, a jerk. They did it by Jimmy Stewart's wife hiding it in her lingerie case, which like the TSA was not going to look through. Uh, of course. And uh, or customs was not going to look through. And uh, to this day, that finger is now at the Royal College of Surgeons. And the DNA ended up proving it was a human finger. So he literally stole a human finger. And then had it taken out of the country, and now it's on display as, like, a stolen finger that a Jimmy jackass. Stewart helped smuggle in. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to say is when you and I were in Boston during the blizzard in 2015, uh, Boston had its own Boston Yeti. And this was just a guy that started trending on Twitter dressed like a Yeti walking through the blizzard. <laughs> um, he was walking up and down different streets. He was helping people dig out their cars. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And uh, he started, like people on Twitter started like going crazy for the Boston Yeti. And he ended up getting interviewed anonymously because he didn't want to give his ID out. If they asked who he was, they said he, he was like, I'm the Yeti. I'm the Boston Yeti. And on ABC news, he said, 
Snowstorms are funny because a sense of camaraderie develops in the community. For me, <laughs> I wanted to lend a claw and do my part. And that's the Yeti. And that Yeti was me. <laughs> Can you imagine if today this is me outing myself as like, I would, I was like I was holding the Boston my breath, Yeti. Just in case. I'm not shocked, but anyway. Oh my God. That was a good one, Em. I, I had no idea about like 99% of that or probably more than that. Well, I'm I'm glad to have helped. I uh, I'm sorry about, uh, I don't know, just being wildly confusing. I feel like half of that was me just describing the monster, and I felt like I was being uh, redundant. I guess so. Sorry. No, about that. no, 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 no. I feel like a good listicle is always very helpful. Um, yeah, and also like super sorry for saying that Jimmy Stewart was like literally a president. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> At in my this life. rate, anyone can be. Can, am I right? Am I right? Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I have a story for you. This is my, my version of our Christmas story, even though I've already done, you know, Jean Benet Ramsey, which was technically on Christmas. So whatever. Here's another one. Okay. Okay. So this one, um, I wonder if you've heard of it. So it, well, it's is, weird that you uh, keep having Christmas crimes or something of Christmas. I know there's a, a shocking amount of them. <laughs> like, a oh, shocking amount. You know what we should cover at some point in the in a future Christmas episode is uh that um uh the the Hollywood murder house that like the family died during Christmas. <gasps> yes, that's right. I have that bookmarked from like years ago. I think we couldn't find enough information on it. I think it was like but that was also in like 2017. So nowadays we probably could find more now that we know how to like use the internet properly. Yeah, for it was for literally research. called I think the Hollywood murder house where like on Christmas Day, like the dad like it's really fucked up. Killed everyone. And like you can for a long time it was abandoned and you could like go look through the window and still see like from the 50s like the presents were still unopened under the yes, tree. Yes, they and like shit. left everything under the tree. Ugh. And I remember by the time we looked into it like the one of the like grandsons or something had like cleaned it out and stuff. But right. it was just like, such a creepy story. Yeah, I will. I will try to do that next year. <laughs> yeah. OK. Anyway, okay. Sorry. if I ever remember, which I won't. So, OK. This is a story of Dewey Sham, a.k.a. the Santa Claus burglaries. Have you heard of this? Uh-uh. Okay. So it's pretty disturbing. So sorry to ruin everyone's Christmas. Great. Okay. <laughs> Super yeah. duper. As I'm like to say, hope you've had fun so far. Okay. <laughs> Great. So this takes place in the 60s in a mountainous region of Montana in a town called Wenberg. The 60s. And, okay. Yes. When President so, Jimmy Stewart was around. Yeah, exactly. I, Back in I, the heyday. You know, and, you know, and his off season, he was also starring in like It's a Wonderful Life, but it's okay. And like <laughs> carry, carrying like human fingers around. And carrying around. fingers around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In his wife's lingerie. Yeah. So Dewey Sham was born in 1945 and grew up on the outskirts of Wenberg, this town. He was born as a pretty weak child. Um, as a toddler, he had a bad head injury. Okay, well, there when it he is. fell off a sleigh, so we know what happens when that happens as a child. I feel like if we really ever had to write notes about, like, if we had to do real quick bullets on uh, on a true crime, if we just started with head injury, it would answer so many later I know. questions. Yeah, I feel like if my child has a head injury, I'm going to be like, oh, uh oh, I'm going to even <laughs> keep if an eye out for some reason in the future. We don't speak. If my child has a head injury, I'm going to text you and be like, I needed someone to know and I needed someone to care. <laughs> no, you're going to if we're not speaking, you're going to call me and be like, my child is perfect and wants to stay with you for the summer. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Good luck, Christine. You can take care of him. We haven't spoken in a while, but like I just had this calling that like you two are really going to get along. Yeah. yeah you guys are going to hit it off. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't worry. We can trade. I'm sure mine will be just as fucked up. We'll send each other or our own children. Well, they'll both have head injuries and we just won't have we won't say anything to each other. And we'll both realize at the same time what happened. <laughs> And then our friendship will be rebo rebonded and it'll be great. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's exactly. Anyway. That's how, that's the epilogue to the epilogue, I guess. I like that in this story, we've created like this horrible rift between us as if like we are not the types to get over a, a grudge in like 10 minutes. And then our, so and then our solution to the rift is decades later, <laughs> try children. to murder each other through our own children. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's pretty good i like it I think somebody so. eva write that down i want to write a new a new we'll write HBO we'll write a we'll, plot movie yeah we'll write some uh we'll, we'll shop it we'll do a little manuscript like, i want to star hugh grant as my husband can i do that okay great. okay we both know it's going to be jude law and even if it's not 
<laughs> literally will hire Hugh Grant and you'll go, oh my God, you guys got Jude Law? That's crazy. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> the other day I was like insisting that Jude Law was in something and Blaze was like, Christine, that's not Jude Law. And then we looked it up and it fucking was Jude Law. And I have never felt so vindicated. But then the next day we were watching something and Blaze is like, you're not going to say anything. And it was like a trailer. And I was like, say anything about what? And he's like, that Jude Law's in there. And I was like, that wasn't Jude Law. And he's oh like, and that was. I, I, we just uh, we just finished on Marvel Monday. This week we finished Captain Marvel. And there were so many times I almost, you're so lucky my phone was busy because I was on Instagram live. I would have sent so many pictures of Jude Law and been like, oh my God. God, it's Jude Law. But I also might have only sent pictures of Brie Larson and been like, wait a minute, is that Jude Law? Wait, is he in it or something? See, that's what I don't he's even the, know. He's don't... the bad guy in, in oh, Captain Marvel. Oh, that's what it was. We saw that and Blaze was like, you're not going to say anything? I was like, about what? He's like, about Jude Law. And I was like, that's not Jude Law. It was Jude Law. Anyway, this it's is embarrassing. Shocking. It's just shocking. It's a, it's a gift. It's a and, curse. And a curse. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway. It's a curse and not a gift. Okay. I wish you knew how many times I think of Jude Law in my life and almost send you a picture of him just just to piss you off but then i don't do it so i have to tell you about it it today it makes me happy (laughs) okay anyway back to this horrible crime okay so he had this head injury as a child not a good sign um and the head injury caused other health issues including a hearing sensitivity um, as well as an extreme personality shift that manifested mostly as violent outbursts uh, he was also born with a congenital heart defect, so just all around like a pretty weak child. Um, unfortunately, his parents died when he was really young. So basically, he's just like the life's had it out for him, I sure. guess. Um, so he almost had to like raise himself. And, uh, you know, this is like in the 40s in this like ta- small town. So it's not like anybody really did anything about it. He basically he kind of like became sort of like a mountain man like he raised himself okay so he's had a head injury and then what else happened again so far so he had a head injury that caused like extreme behavioral shifts and stuff like that but then both of his parents died when he was really young so at this point he's like kind of on his own um he lived on the outskirts of town like i said but he rarely like he never left the area growing up um and he was very like antisocial so he never went in town he never really interacted with people in town and it was a really small town where everybody kind of knew each other so he was sort of just like the outsider Mm -hmm. um he was pretty isolated out in the woods he lived alone for most of his life he learned to forage hunt um and even like sew. so he was kind of i mean he really was like a mountain man sure he was probably Um, the yeti actually the, yeah, wait, yeah, actually, hold on. <laughs> he was, he, the, he was the wild man in the snow. Wait a minute. <laughs> we figured it's it making out. making a lot of sense now. <laughs> I have a finger, actually, of his. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So uh, people were, like, somewhat wary of him, but he'd been there for so long that they just kind of, like, I don't know, ignored it and left him alone. Sure. Um, but he did have a pretty extensive rap sheet for being on his own. So he had a criminal record that included everything from petty theft, traffic violations, trespassing, fraud, vandalism and animal cruelty uh all the way to full-on armed robbery and vehicle theft so he's like uh somehow still you know not evading the law even though he's like evading shock i like how they just leave him in the woods and they're like we don't even want to (laughs) like like, don't invite him to brunch okay so we're gonna leave him off the invite list got it cool (laughs) Um, but it seems like the, it seemed like the isolation was only making his like violent tendencies and anger worse, especially because he had had that like extreme personality shift and head injury as a kid. So in one winter, sorry, one winter in 1966, things got bad. Uh, Dewey formed a plan. Uh, it's just, okay, buckle up. Okay. So little background. So this small town, Wenberg, um, they, it was Christmas season. They had this like festival they did every year and they would get together at city hall for a dinner party that I guess he was not invited to. Um, and obviously Dewey had not participated in this since he was like a kid. Uh, so for whatever reason on Christmas Eve, 1966, he kind of snapped, Hmm. um, in the middle of the night, he went, I think I actually saw this in an episode on, I think, id or something at one point um in the middle of the night he went into town and just like fully terrorized this village oh shit so remember this is like a long time ago so they didn't have alarm systems or anything like that so the most up okay so (laughs) this is just all very fucked up but one of the most fucked up parts remember how i said he'd like learn to sew Mm -hmm. so when he broke he started breaking into people's homes and he was dressed as freaking santa claus the entire time what like he like dressed as Santa and then started breaking into people's homes. Um, and I don't know if it was like he lost his marbles or maybe he was like, oh, 
it's like people it's christmas eve so they'll think i'm real like i don't know like I don't he was know just why. hoping only children were home that way yes like, exactly <laughs> like all their parents are at this like city hall thing and all the kids are home and he just waltzes on in he's like hi it's me <laughs> maybe it scary. worked on at least one or two houses those children okay. were like holy shit guess who just okay. came and the parents weren't here well you're about to oh god okay okay eat okay. your words okay so once he was inside, he did that creepy thing we always talked about where he like made himself at home, you know, like how the, the original Night Stalker would like have a beer and like eat turkey. Yeah. So he would like go in their fridge. He would help himself to the contents. He would take like their valuables. Um, and then at one of the houses, his plan went south. So one of the family members woke up and walked in to find him like sifting through their belongings. And it was a toddler. <gasps> it was a little kid. Oh, shit. So this little kid walks out and sees him. And I guess I guess his Santa outfit worked because the kid was like, oh, what are you doing? Like, oh, my gosh. Just like thought it was Santa, I guess, which that, I guess that makes sense. I guess that I mean, OK, in that one circumstance, though, that's wildly convenient. Like, yes. What a way to. Uh, Maybe he knew what he was doing, but more than I thought. I don't did, know. He didn't like kill the kid, did he? Did he just uh, like I'm Santa. Goodbye now. Up the chimney <laughs> I go. <laughs> I'm Santa. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Up the chimney I go. Oh my god. Okay, so he he also has had had his dog low with him. Okay, which like poor dog to be even like living with this man. He boy, he was bringing a dog into these houses. <laughs> was his dog I think a it was mute like for or something? I think. It, I mean, I assume the dog was like very well trained. Can you imagine was, like, if you decided you were going to break into everyone's houses and bring Geo? Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Let me tell to you how fair. fucking fast you'd get arrested. <laughs> to be fair, I don't even know how to sew anything, so I assume okay. this mountain man knew how to like train a dog. Or well, he was also like, I remember he had gotten in trouble for animal cruelty, so I don't know like what the Ooh, fuck this guy has done. Right. Okay. Um, but he had some sort of, I guess, a hold on this dog. Um, but the dog was like friendly enough, so it didn't like attack the kid. I don't know. I don't know how he like pulled this off. But um, he did not kill the child, which is how we know what happened, basically. Um, just to give you like some, okay. give everyone a little warning. Did the dog, did the kid get to meet the dog too? Can you imagine if you were the kid and you were like, <laughs> where's the fucking reindeer? This thing, this dog. Here, it's a German shepherd. It, this fucking, okay, got it. Got it. You're a fly away on tramp. It's like okay. growling at you. Right. Yeah. Uh, but so the guy literally talks to the kid and then he's like, <laughs> the kid's like what are you doing or you know yeah. i guess it's a toddler so i don't know how well they can speak um and he basically just like talks to her and is like oh don't worry and then like gives her a snack and says don't like don't tell your parents and then before she can like go wake her parents up he fucking pieces out and like well sure leaves. yeah goodbye i am santa goodbye goodbye now <laughs> so, <laughs> and especially like if your toddler comes in and is like i just saw santa you're like okay and he had a dog. Well, like, go to, now for go the to rest bed. of my life, every, every Christmas morning when our child's like, I saw Santa, I'm going to be like, where were the, Where was Santa? <laughs> where did he what, go? Did he take mommy's pearls? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I assume <laughs> either one you of our... You said it so like a, like a little haunted Victorian doll. <laughs> did he take mommy's pearls? <laughs> <laughs> like in what universe do either of our households have pearls? But that's besides the <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay well did he take the steak out of the fridge i exactly. guess is the ultimate question did his weird like scoundrel dog just like show <laughs> up and not bark oh my god okay so anyway now this creep has stolen all the shit out of people's houses and like even interacted with one of the kids so he and his dog start to head back home and he's on his way back out of town when he hears a commotion um and he's convinced that like they've called the sheriff and he knows that he's you know had this like bad criminal record and so he's like shit i'm going to jail um so he hides out and uh or maybe the, the kid do you think the kid like told the parents and the parents believed the kid and then like he thought yeah that's were... i think that's probably what what he at least what he thought happened because he like pretty soon after he left he heard like commotion and he was like oh my god they're calling the police like mm. i've outed myself to this sure. child and now she, yeah. yeah yeah but instead of sirens he hears them start singing okay in this town Okay. And they're singing this like weird song that they sing every year that doesn't quite totally make sense to me, but I guess this maybe is a Montana thing. And the lyrics are like, "What? Are you gonna <laughs> fucking hold my hand and sing about how much you like want to date me or something again?" It's even better. <clears> Here <throat> are the lyrics. 
Wahoo Forest, a welcome Christmas, come this way. Wahoo. Are you serious? You don't recognize the song? Um, I'm starting to. So essentially, this town is having this Christmas party in the town square, despite all of its horrible crimes. And like some sort of miracle, his congenital heart defect just sort of healed. Okay, Christine, got it. And his head injury was, and his head injury was just magically reversed. And suddenly, the hate in his heart was replaced with love and adoration. Um, you did. <laughs> so, you, and so, you did a good job. Wait a minute. So, I got way farther than I thought I would. Um, so he and his dog, Lo, turned their snowbill around and they raced back into town, still dressed as Santa to return. All I like, the by the way, goods. up until now, you have not said snowmobile until this exact moment. At this point, I knew that I knew that I'd be giving up. Are you sure you mean um, sleigh? Sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> stolen goods. So for the first time in decades, Dewey participated in the Christmas festivities. He even sat at the head of the table for the Christmas feast. Then they all held to hands and sang their weird unintelligible song together and he carved the roast beast the end <sighs> okay okay hear me out so i think i heard my skull crack i, I <laughs> so, out, so, what an out-of-body experience okay well i feel way dumb wait it okay so long. uh okay phew this was really stressful does because dewey sham spill dr seuss or some shit Dewey Sham is a synonym for wet blanket. It took me a long time to come up with oh all this shit. Oh my god, Dewey Sham. Oh, that's funny. So Dewey it came Sham. up with Dewey Sham stands for wet blanket. Um, by the way, this is the story of the Grinch, if anyone's wondering. It was very difficult to come up with a name that wasn't like too, like the grump. Like I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> so I did wet blanket, a synonym for wet blanket. Um, Dewey Sham, went- that's genius. It really sounded like a real fucking person. Oh, good. I was like, Blaze, who is this? And he's like, I don't fucking know. And I was like, okay, good. Uh, the town was called Wenberg instead of Whoville. Uh-huh. Uh, like who, the- when, aha, 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 aha. Bergville. Nailed and uh, let's see, head injury. I just assumed that the Grinch had a head injury. Pretty, Montana, pretty well. though? What a weird thing to I couldn't do. fit. I couldn't find it. I was, because, okay, so do you know where Whoville actually was located? In in Dr. Seuss's mind, I don't know. Yeah, on a fucking snowflake. <laughs> and I was like, how am I supposed to say that without sounding like totally Looney Tunes? Can you imagine? First of all, I would have still not figured out it was the Grinch. I would just thought you were <laughs> literally insane. It's like, oh, and he lived in this town on a snowflake. And I'd be like, I have questions, but I'm not going to oh ask a single one. What okay, about the so dog? Then, the dog, because Max, so obviously. Lo, the dog is named Lo, and that's the opposite of Max. Oh. Um, oh, I'm surprised you named the dog like Minnie. Max, yeah, I, th- I was scared that that was too too spot on. I was like so nervous you'd figure it out like right away. Hey, guess what? Um, I absolutely <laughs> didn't. Even when you sang, I was like, this sounds oddly familiar. What's happening I was here? Halfway through, I was like, oh, fuck. I'm just going to like not have seen the Grinch and been like, literally, what are those sounds coming out of your face? If you told me like, and then all of a sudden Taylor Momsen shows up and she's like singing about where Christmas is because she's lost it. <laughs> then I would have. See, OK, really I never saw out. those Grinch movies. I only ever saw like the 1966 movie movie oh really the book so oh i was gonna say at the end and matthew morrison is now traumatically scarring people by have you been starring. watching those clips because it is yes. out of this world it is the it's like now become a kind of a little bit of a porno <laughs> it's like it's a, horrific if you don't know matthew morrison has has really sexualized the grinch in a way i didn't know was possible yeah renee said her her instagram has now turned into a matthew morrison hate account so <laughs> i don't know if that means anything to anyone but um, oh, and I said he learned to sew because he sewed his own like Grinch costume. Uh-huh. Uh, I said, okay, so uh, his entire criminal record, basically petty theft, traffic violations with that fucking sled, <laughs> uh, t- <laughs> trespassing, fraud, trying to be Santa. Wow, you really, uh, this, you did a, <laughs> I like, was way too into this. I mean, you really took the, after 200 plus episodes of like having to like be really like critical <laughs> in your thinking and like your your fact checking i think you saw a creative opportunity and r- r- sprinted with it. i aggressively was like i'm gonna i'm just gonna put all of my You're like this yeah, is where my script writing my comes in <laughs> um and so vandalism obviously and then animal cruelty because i rewatched the movie from 66 and i'm like 
He is not nice to that dog, man. Oh, he's certainly, I remember him being real fucking awful to Max. He like whips the dog. I'm like, that is not okay. So I kept that in. Now it makes sense why that dog was like so submissive and like yeah. was not barking to children. Oh my yes. God, Christine, you're So evil. anyway, it, this was just this horrible. Is, this is how, this is how I imagine you felt after the escape room where I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you are dangerously good at bamboozling me. Okay, do you know why this happened? Do you have any last year, right? Didn't we say something okay. about this? Last year we said remind okay, we said in an episode of November 2019, remind us uh remind Christine to do the Grinch and pretend like it's a real story and then one of us said like uh, like oh, and we can pretend he has an enlarged heart and oh we were like going on and on. We had a whole thing about it. And then uh, I said, but don't remind M, just remind me because I don't want M to know. And I have gotten, I mean, the amount of DMs and tweets and emails. And that's why I was so frantic about like doing our Christmas episode because every time someone tweeted, oh. I was like, I really hope M doesn't see this. I and didn't then see a couple anything. people tagged you in it. And I was like, hello, don't tag M. Like <laughs> they're not supposed to know. If I saw it, it completely clearly did not process in my stupid brain. I and it's so funny because in my head, I was like, oh, I'm just going to know because it's all I've been thinking about and all everyone has been asking me to do for like the last three months. In October is when people started being like, just a reminder, just a reminder. And I was like, oh, so um, not a anyway. clue. Phew, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> Good. I'm glad that you have less stress now. That was, uh, I'm just really wowed by your artistic license there. You did a really good job. <laughs> and I felt bad because I was like, what kind of crime? There's not even a crime. I was like, I wrote the first bullet is this is a very disturbing story, but then like nothing disturbing. Happened. You ha I, you had the nerve really too to even be like, oh, I think I saw this on Discovery or something. Because <laughs> I said he snapped and I was like, okay, how do I like <laughs> I saw it on an episode of uh, Snapped. <laughs> you could have said you watched it on fucking Netflix and you wouldn't have really been lying. I was trying to come up with a way to say it. I saw it on TV without being too sneaky, but it would. I mean, oh, I have a headache. I was I'm very nervous. I'm about very that. impressed with you, and also saddened by my own. Uh, my no, own I thinking. tried really hard to until how long Dahu did it take Dories. you to write that? Because you didn't have to really research anything. You had to like write that as a as a yeah. I wrote. I watched the movie a couple times, and then I researched the hell out of the stupid story which uh, like is how i know that whoville is on a snowflake which i'm like that's not helpful to me whatsoever then thesaurus.com got like 50 percent of their yearly business from me for looking up like <laughs> wet blanket <laughs> well also like uh the fact that you could not say the most fun fact of all that they lived on a fucking snowflake i know i was so annoyed i was like that i need uh yeah so i just i put in a blank and as we did it i was like montana i don't know i made up i made up a place. i think maybe had you said that like you dress the dog as a reindeer or something then I would have caught on I yeah I, I I took a part I took some things out that I thought would be too obvious I really feel like I should have caught it by the time you said that a dog came with him I was just like can you imagine if someone as loud as Gio was going to help you sneak in somewhere because that I know I kept trying happen. to be like yeah yeah anyway there was a dog let's not talk about it <laughs> <laughs> oh Whoa. well well thank you for going with me on that ride thank you to everyone who kept reminding me and uh sorry if I just frenetically ran through that because I was so nervous that is uh now my favorite episode you've ever done because you never get <laughs> you never get to really be creative with yours because like with the with like my end of things, like paranormal wise, I can almost kind of like write the story because there's just like, oh, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. But you usually have to be so strict with your like chronology to things. Yeah, I guess I'm so happy much for you. Lessons. That had to have been really fun. Oh, thanks. It was very fun. I was, I was very excited to to do it. Maybe you and should start doing happy. more fake crimes too like that oh my god your poor anxiety every time you're gonna be like this is fake and i'm gonna be like no this is an actual homicide m oh Maybe like, <laughs> you yes. know? i haven't thought of that but this would be i mean think of the possibilities like i mean that's think of the possibilities yeah anyway thank you everybody for letting me do that that was fun that little con Oof, well thank you i appreciate it i had a, that was I had a lot of fun at the end knowing that like I could finally breathe like this is the first sigh of relief I could ever have on the show. You were very you were like Whew. I think I know what's happening but I like also don't understand. You also you like, well you really threw me when you said you were about to sing and I was like this fucking woman again every time. <laughs> Every time. But I thought you'd have figured it out right before that. So I was like, oh, fuck. Now I have to actually Well, you said sing. they started singing and I was like, okay, maybe there was like a play at the city hall. Like a, <laughs> That's like what I was trying. The to, little Bethlehem I some points. stuff. Some of the bullets were like, I guess this was their Christmas tradition every year. Oh, my God. <laughs> the musicale, if you will. 
Oh, oh. boy. Anyway. Well, perfect. What a great Christmas episode. In Wenberg. In Wenberg. <laughs> wow. On a snowflake or a, a lick of flames or something. I'm, I'm not sure what the opposite <laughs> yeah, is. In a fireplace where Mooney put all of his other blinds. On one uh, embered ash or something. Oh. Well, thank you for that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm now terrified of your mind once more, but what's new? Oh my God, it goes both ways now with the escape room. Also, this was the last episode of 2020. <gasps> Whoa, my stomach Aww. dropped. I'm so happy it's that it's over. It's so anticlimactic. It's like, I'm, I can't wait to never record another 2020 episode, but also like... Me too. Whoa. Oh, so I guess At this is... At least we didn't oh. end on like a real murder. We ended on like... True. A fun, a classic story. Well, last year we apparently made a lot of predictions about 2020. That's right, and they all and we went, refused to do that. They went real yeah. wrong. Yeah, so yeah, like, people still quote us about that. Ooh. So maybe when we make predictions for 2021, we just say, hopefully, it's a lot fucking better than 2021 because, like, this yeah, one. Yeah, but we are also not getting our hopes up because we don't want to jinx it like we did last year. Please God, let something normal happen in 2021. <laughs> we were literally joking about like a quarantine at the end of 2019. Like, are you not fucking even... kidding me? I don't. I really... no, because you like taught me the word quarantine. We were like, how crazy? Can you imagine if that happened nowadays? It's like full on. Whoa. We were we were really fucking up with with our 2020 talk. So I'm just gonna let 2021 do its thing, and I'm not gonna try and like put my opinion on it and see what happens. Okay, how about? When something really, really, really cool happens in 2021, y'all tag us about this episode and be like, just so you know, it's 2021 right now, and I'm listening to this episode, and something really cool happened. And then- And you reversed it. Yeah. You reversed the Yay. curse you put on, on all of us. And then Yay. people will just tweet us good news about their lives in 2021, so we- Yes, and this is me saying you're welcome yeah. for that. You are well. I, I saw it coming. I, I said it. Yeah, we you know, did. I fucking said We're it. We're doing it again, Em. Oh, my God. We're doing it again. Okay, let's at least hope the, like- it's not as bad as 2020. That's what I'm... Let's hope... Let's leave it at A that. little bit. Let's just fingers crossed. Bit. Okay. Okay, fingers crossed. Woo! Anyway, we will see you in 2021, everybody. Oh my God, this could be the year we meet our kids. Wait a minute. <gasps> okay, goodbye. The year we meet our kids. Oh my God, Em says this every year. I can't wait to say it in 2022 also. All right, you better get cooking then. Who? And? That's... Why? We? Drink. Woo! Woo!